When a unique orphan with a strange power befriends a boy with a loving family, he reveals his biggest secret, hoping to be accepted as one of their own. Soon, a tragic accident makes his dreams come true, but far from what he imagined. One night in a carnival, a man asks to buy cotton candy from a stall. Despite saying he's already closing, the puzzled vendor heeds the request of the pleading man, who watches him spin the sugar confection in awe. After eating the cotton candy, the young man sneaks inside an orphanage and disrobes, revealing his children's pajamas, and quietly returns to bed, transforming into a boy named Simone. Sometime later, the orphanage's director, Madame Gautran, greets a driver, saying the children are ready for their trip to town. While the orphans fool around the house, Simone smoothens his shirt, hoping to be adopted soon. However, Kevin, a bully, calls Simone ugly, so the educator scolds him. Later that day, the educator watches over the children at the town's festival as they hurriedly board a docked ship. Parting from the others, Simone climbs to the engine room and hides. Unexpectedly, a girl named Madeline stares at him from the other side when her brother, Tama, enters from a hatch, sneaking cake and a bottle of wine for themselves. Tama sees Simone looking at them, so he invites him over to share their food. After drinking some wine, Simone reveals he was left as a baby at the orphanage. As sympathy for the orphan's unfortunate life, Tama claims he's allergic to potatoes and can't eat fries. Much later, Simone steals a plate of bread and hides underneath the table to eat with his new friends. Then, the trio hears the siblings' parents looking for them. Suddenly, strong hands grab Madeline from their hiding spot, followed by Tama, who tries to escape. Despondently, Simone watches his friends laugh with their father, Jack, and mother, Agnes Durant, longing for a family himself. Days after, Madame Gautran calls Simone, informing him that Jack's son wants to invite him over the weekend to their house. Thrilled, the orphan accepts the invitation and happily returns to his room. When the weekend arrives, Jacques fetches Simone and drives him to their house, where Tama welcomes him eagerly. Then, the delighted orphan helps prepare the table and joins the family dinner. Later that night, Simone peeks through Madeline's door, watching Agnes help her daughter wear her nasal cannula to help her breathe. Seeing the lovely sight, the lonely orphan quietly retreats to Thomas' room. The boy eagerly shows Simone his astronaut books, but the loving parents put them both to sleep. But the rowdy pair turns on their flashlights in the dark to continue their fun. The following day, Jacques enters the dining room with Thomas's birthday cake, so the celebrant immediately blows out the candles. Laughingly, Simone and Madeline blow it too, while Jacques tries lighting it again. After playing charades, the boys engage Jacques in a pillow fight, so Madeline gives Simone the heaviest pillow, helping him attack her father. Later that night, Thomas sneaks a pocket knife into the fort they built in his room. He asks Simone if he wants to be their blood brother for life, saying they must mix their blood and reveal each other's biggest secret. Adamant to be part of a family, Simone affirms. Then, Thomas slashes his palm and draws blood on a glass ashtray, while Madeline and Simone follow suit. After completing the pact and covering their wounds with a bandage, Thomas shares his secret, revealing he saw his mother bear. Then, Madeline despondently shares that she doesn't have friends, but her brother protests, saying it's obvious. Pressed to reveal an untold truth, Madeline says she won't live for more than 20 years, according to her parents. As the boys stare at her silently, she prompts Simone to reveal his secret. Reluctantly, Simone makes his friends swear to continue their brotherhood despite a strange secret. Then, Simone magically changes his appearance to another boy before turning back, leaving the siblings in shock. Upon Tomas' request, Simone changes into another boy's appearance and reverts, clarifying that he can only copy someone's looks if he has touched them. He then shows that his wound has disappeared after changing, wondering if he's immortal, as Tomas suggests. Nevertheless, Madeline says Simone must retain his scar to prove their blood brothers. After amusing his friends with his power, the trio returns to their beds. Deeper into the night, Simone hears heaving breaths from Madeline's room. When he enters, he finds the girl catching her breath and calming down. Curious about her pain, Simone accepts Madeline's hand and changes into her. Suddenly, he feels the same aching in his chest and struggles for air. Madeline tells him to wait patiently until it passes, so Simone returns to himself, understanding their shared pain. The following day, Madeline brings Simone a pink raincoat her mother bought him. As they sit in awkward silence, the girl suddenly kisses him on the cheek. Then, Tama enters, annoyed by their matching raincoat's color. As the two boys venture into the woods, Tama gives Simone his pocket knife so he can dig an escape from the orphanage. After setting a branch on a path to mark their starting point, Tama eagerly starts the race. 
Due to his small body, Simone falls behind, so he changes into someone athletic and runs past Tama. As the pair runs further, Tama calls Simon to stop but accidentally slips and falls into a deep ravine. When Simone hears his friend scream, he searches and calls out for him, stumbling upon the cliff. That night, Jack pursues the woods with a search party for the two boys. When Simone hears the group calling out their names, he realizes they're mostly searching for Tama. Meanwhile, Agnias comforts her daughter at home, equally worried for the missing boys. As Simone witnesses the disheartened family outside the window, he nervously decides to return as Tama, renewing his disappeared blood-packed wound. Shortly, Agnias opens the door to Tama, who reluctantly returns her unfamiliar embrace. Not long after, Madeline watches her supposed brother being questioned by the police. The fake Tama narrates the incident, worrying Madame Gutron, who asks where Simone was last seen. Worried they might find Tomas's body, Simone says they got lost, blaming himself for his friend's disappearance, so they let him rest. Later that night, Simone enters his new room and Madeline follows him. Suspiciously, the girl asks if he's really Tama and checks his packed wound, making her believe Simone is gone. Soon after an unfortunate search, the Durants and the orphanage workers gather around Simone's empty grave as Madeline weeps for her lost childhood love. Years later, Dr. Badet advises a much older Madeline on what not to eat, but she refuses to listen. The worried doctor says she must be careful with her health since there's a long list of patients before she can have a heart transplant. Frustrated by her unwavering condition, Madeline exits the hospital tearfully. While Jacques cleans his vehicle outside his mirror shop, a young woman enters to claim her order, asking for Tomas specifically. When a much older Tama hands the customer her package, she then asks about his plans on vacation, but the timid young man insists he'll remain working. On Tomas's birthday, the Durant family and friends gather as the celebrant unwraps his gifts. Then, Jacques hands his son his gift, containing a mirror plaque for the shop with both of their names, revealing he's handing over the shop to him. Outside, Tama looks at the scar on his palm, despondently pondering the shop left for the real Tama. Suddenly, Madeline arrives with her boyfriend, who drives her on his motorbike. Seeing her lonely brother, Madeline approaches him, learning their father has already revealed his plan. When the young man claims he doesn't know what he wants, Madeline hugs him in sympathy. That evening, Jacques calls their guests to make fun of the celebrant's pictures as a family tradition. As the proud parents tell stories behind the scanned photographs on a slideshow, the young Simone's picture flashes on the screen, catching them all off guard. Later that night, Thomas stares at his reflection in his room and changes into his original face as a grown-up Simone for the first time. While walking in town, Thomas sees a telescope displayed in a store, so he eagerly enters the shop to check it out. However, he stops short when he finds the blonde woman inside. Hesitant to talk to her, Simone shifts into his own skin and purchases the telescope without the woman's attention. Afterwards, Simone eagerly buys a plate of fries, missing the dish's taste since he has been impersonating a man allergic to potatoes. Unexpectedly, the young man sees Madeline staring at him through the window, recognizing his face. So, Simone nervously looks away, hoping she doesn't realize who he is. As Simone returns home as Tama, he hurriedly changes his shirt just as Madeline knocks on his room. The young woman relentlessly insists that her childhood friend is still alive and shows Tama a stolen picture of Simone at the cafe on her phone. Unable to look at his photo, the fake Tama refutes Madeline's claims, saying Simone is dead. Unaware that she's talking to the real Simone, Madeline walks out in frustration. The following day, Simone sees a missing people's poster with his picture from Madeline, who hands passerby similar flyers. Thinking of a way to stop Madeline, Simone purchases new clothes as he reverts to his original form. Deliberately, Simone enters the cafe where he was seen, finding Madeline inside, secretly waiting for him. After gaining the woman's attention, Simone takes a seat. As expected, Madeline approaches and asks if he's Simone. However, Simone calmly denies it, but the young woman disbelieves him, so he claims her wariness saddens him. Taken aback, Madeline apologizes and turns away. Suddenly, she has trouble breathing, so Simone worriedly leads her outside for air. As Madeline calms down, she asks for the young man's name, so Simone claims he's called Michelle. Then, the waitress hands Michelle's fries and offers Madeline some help which she refuses. Michelle's indifference to Madeline's problem irks her, so he claims he's merely disinterested as he eats his fries. While staring at Madeline's face, Michelle calls her beautiful. Amidst the awkward silence, Madeline receives a text from her parents. Simultaneously, Michelle gets one too and texts a quick reply. Before the woman leaves, she writes her number on the paper plate, implying she's interested as well. At dinner, Tama watches Madeline expecting a text from Michelle, unaware she's in the same room as him. 
To hide his identity, Tama buys another phone for Michelle's use. Soon, the two meet for a date by the beach, where Madeline shows him her secret hideout in a nearby cavern. Enamored by the beautiful woman, Michelle kisses her, which Madeline passionately reciprocates. On their second date, Madeline leads Michelle to their house through the woods and into her room. Noticing her lover is unusually silent because of her intentions, Madeline reveals her days are numbered and kisses him, prompting an intimate afternoon. Afterward, Michelle hears the Durants arrive, so he hurriedly dresses up to leave, but Madeline insists on introducing him. Downstairs, Jacques and Agnès greets Michelle, unaware he's the same person they have lived with for the past years. However, the young man locks eyes with Jacques, who seems to recognize his face. One night, while lying in the woods around a bonfire, Madeline confesses to Thomas that she's madly in love with Michelle. Emotionally, she admits to wanting a long life beyond her illness, while Thomas stares at her emotionally. Then, Madeline realizes Tama is looking at her the same way Michelle does, making her get up and return to bed. The following day, Madeline rummages through her brother's stuff, looking for the same shirt Michelle is wearing on the missing poster. At the cafe, Michelle calls and waits for Madeline, who suspiciously watches him from afar. When she doesn't show up, Michelle leaves to retrieve Tomas's clothes from a backpack he's hiding in the woods. Unbeknownst to Simone, Madeline witnesses how he changed from Michelle to Tomas, confirming her worst fear. Shortly after, Madeline confronts Toma in his room, revealing she knows a secret, and calls him Simone. Distraught, Simone stops her outburst and transforms into his original self, leaving Madeline wailing in agony. When the aggrieved woman recovers, she asks about her real brother's whereabouts. As Simone leads Madeline into the deep ravine where Toma died, she tells him to reveal the truth to her parents. However, Simone offers that he'll run away instead of making Jacques and Agnia suffer from his deceit. Enraged, Madeline calls him a coward, saying her parents don't care about him and swears she'll find another way to reveal his power. Tearfully, Simone professes his love for Madeline as she walks away. Upon Madeline's request, the police, led by Commissioner Leroy, enclosed the ravine to retrieve the dead boy's remains. Afterward, the officer questions Thomas in her office, showing him a picture of the raincoat and asking about Simone. Since the boy's remains were recovered, the urn is placed inside Simone's once empty grave. Knowing it's her brother inside, Madeline quietly weeps and glares at Toma, who excuses himself and rushes home. Thinking he has no choice but to escape, Toma gathers his stuff and is about to leave when the Durants return. Toma claims he's suffocated at home, so Jacques and Agnès worriedly try to talk to him. Suddenly, Madeline points a shotgun at Toma and shoots the ceiling to warn Jacques of her tenacity. Distressed, she threatens Toma to reveal his true self. But when the young man takes a step, Madeline immediately shoots him in the stomach, so Jacques snatches the shotgun from his daughter. While Agnès calls for an ambulance, Madeline shouts at Thomas to transform and save himself from the fatal wound. Tormented, Thomas claims that he's sad and tells the Durants that he loves them as he returns as Simone. As Jacques and Agnès step away from the strange man in shock, Madeline explains Simone replaced Thomas, whom they buried earlier. When Simone is about to leave, Jacques accuses him of pushing his son. Affronted, Simone denies and calls him father, so Jacques throws him in rage. Eventually, Jacques weepingly strangles Simone outside as the police arrive. To escape, Simone changes into Toma, shocking Jacques and the onlookers as he seizes the opportunity. Commissioner Leroy tries to stop the young man, but he immediately drives away with the police car while Madeline falls in pain. Shortly, the police intercept Simone in town, so he escapes on foot. When they reach a crown, Leroy sees a discarded bloody shirt on the ground, implying the escapee has transformed into another face. A month later, Madeline looks back at a police officer observing them from afar, assuming Simone follows them around. Suddenly, Madeline sees an old man staring at her in sorrow. Recognizing that he's Simone, she approaches him, but Agnès calls her back. As she returns to her mother, Madeline drops her cane and runs towards her lover in his original body, whom she kisses longingly, professing her love no matter who he is. Cautious of the police watching them, Madeline tells Simone to take her as they run away. However, Madeline falls behind and drops to the ground because of her worsening condition. As Agnès catches up, Simone fails to carry Madeline with his body, so he transforms into Jacques before the crowd and runs to the car. Arriving at the hospital, Dr. Badet hurriedly takes Madeline to the emergency room. Not long after, Commissioner Leroy's troop swarms the building to look for Simone, asking to check everyone's identity individually. While Simone waits for an update, the real Jacques arrives, informing Agnès about the police. 
Simultaneously, the young man changes into an old man, so Agnes tells her husband Simone helped her, insisting they must prioritize Madeline. When Dr. Bidet returns, he informs the Durants that Madeline needs immediate surgery, but she's still listed for transplant. Unfortunately, Jacques' heart is unfit for his daughter, so the doctor advises them to bid their goodbyes while Simone silently sheds tears. Shortly, Simone sees officers approaching, so he leaves and takes a physician's face. Then, he steals some medication in the storage room and wears a coat. When Officer Dennis stops Simone to check his identity, the real physician sees him, so he runs to escape. While Dennis searches for Simone, Commissioner Leroy appears, demanding the stamp. Suspicious of the woman, Dennis radios the real Leroy, realizing in front of him is Simone. However, the convict knocks the officer unconscious, transforms into Dennis, and steals his stuff. Now wearing Leroy's face, Simone approaches the guards outside Madeline's room, granting her entry. She informs Jack and Agnes that all exits are secured, implying he can't escape, asking for a moment alone with Madeline. Realizing that she's Simone, Agnes and Jack exit the room, allowing him to reunite with their dying daughter. Shortly, the guards stand in shock before the real Leroy. When the officer barges into the room, she sees Simone lifeless while holding Madeline on the bed. After realizing that Simone killed himself with a substance, Leroy finds a note on his hand, asking them to save Madeline. To heed his final request, Simone and Madeline's body is prepared for a heart transplant. Soon after, the Durants grieve at the cemetery where they rightfully place the urns of the two boys under their respective names, officially naming Simone Durant. As the media surround the controversial family, Madeline runs away, living her second life with her lover's heart. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.